probably aware that dental caries is a widespread issue that affects people of all ages. Caries is caused when oral bacteria creates acids that erode the enamel. Other than proper oral hygiene practices, there is a need for additional approaches to reduce the burden of this disease. This is where a revolutionary approach to preventing tooth decay by using a caries vaccine comes in. The term vaccine is a Latin word which means the suspension of killed microorganisms, which could be either bacteria, viruses or rickettsiae. We are all familiar with the concept of vaccines. For example, the polio vaccine that all of us have taken in the form of drops up until 5 years of age. This vaccine is administered for the prevention, improvement or treatment of infectious diseases. These are effective since they stimulate the production of protective antibodies and other immune mechanisms. We need to understand at this point that the concept of vaccination was strengthened due to the transmissible and infectious nature of the caries as well as due to the discovery and understanding of the secretory immune system. Let's begin by first understanding what immunity is and its types to understand better how vaccines work. The word immunity is derived from the Latin word immunis, which basically means free from or exempt. Our environment is constantly surrounded by microbes and hence the body naturally possesses the power to resist their attacks. But this power may be inherited or acquired. Based on this, immunity can be categorized as natural or acquired immunity. When the body has inherited resistance to infection, we term it as natural immunity. It includes mainly three things. First is the phagocytosis of bacteria by white blood cells and cells of the tissue macrophage system. Second, it can destroy the acid secretions of the stomach. Third, it also includes the presence of chemical compounds in the blood and saliva which will destroy the microorganisms. Moving on, if immunity is acquired during the lifetime of an individual, it is termed as acquired immunity. For example, once a person gets chickenpox, it is very rare for them to be affected by it for a second time since the body has acquired immunity against it. This type of immunity can further be divided into active and passive immunity. When an individual acquires resistance in response to the introduction of microorganisms or toxins into the body, it is called as active immunity. This is achieved due to the action of T cells and B cells and the immunity is long lasting. It can either occur naturally or in an artificial manner. When a person meets the microbe directly, they acquire natural active immunization. On the other hand, if the microbe as a whole or in parts is injected into the person to develop antibodies and the person thus becomes immune to the said microbes, we call it artificial active immunization. Moving on, we have passive immunization. This is a process whereby pre-made elements of the immune system like antibodies are transferred to a person and the body does not have to create these elements itself. Unlike active immunity, this is short-lasting. Passive immunity too can be naturally or artificially acquired. In cases where the antibodies are transferred from the mother to the fetus, it is called as natural passive immunity. On the flip side, artificial passive immunization is normally given via injections. Now, talking about the caries vaccine, we have already established the fact that getting a vaccine is a form of immunization which can be achieved in either active or passive fashion. It may be prepared from live modified organisms, inactivated or killed organisms, or from the extracted cellular fractions, toxoids, or a combination of both. The routes of administration could be topical, intranasal, tonsillar or through the oral mucosa in the lower lip area as has been done in several researches. For the caries vaccine, the monoclonal antibodies specific to the target antigen of streptococcus mutants in vivo and in tobacco plants have been developed. More recently, researchers have been exploring the use of different types of vaccines including DNA-based vaccines and nanoparticle-based vaccines to prevent tooth decay. These approaches have shown promising results in preclinical studies and there is hope that they could lead to the development of effective caries vaccines in the future. While a caries vaccine would be a significant breakthrough in the prevention of tooth decay, there are still challenges that need to be overcome. One challenge is ensuring that the vaccine is safe and effective in all populations, including children, older adults and those with compromised immune systems. Another challenge is developing a vaccine that can provide long-lasting protection against tooth decay. In conclusion, 
The Keres vaccine is a promising approach to preventing tooth decay. While more research is needed to develop an effective vaccine, the potential benefits of this approach are significant. By reducing the incidence of tooth decay, the Keres vaccine could improve oral health and reduce the burden of dental disease on individuals and communities.